Welcome to STEM Club. In this week's video, we're... Oh, sorry, excuse me. Oh, it's Chrissy. Hi, Chrissy. Oh, hi, Samantha. What's up? Yeah, I was just wondering whether or not that you could make me some elephant toothpaste because I've seen some amazing videos on TikTok and my toothpaste looks a bit, well, not exactly very exciting. And I was just wondering whether you would be able to do some of those cool science experiments whereby you make elephant toothpaste. That's no trouble at all. Brilliant, thanks so much. Okay, bye. Let's have a quick look at this. I mean, it looks really fun, but it, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure about doing this. Do you know what? I'm going to do it for you, so you don't have to worry about doing this if you don't want to try it at home. But if you do, then we'll go through it together, okay? Uh, let's start by having a look on Twinkle. So if I've got the app, I can just type in elephant toothpaste and yeah, okay, great. So we've got elephant toothpaste and I'll just print that out and we'll have a look at what we need. Okay, so here are all the things we need. So let's get all the bits together. So empty water bottle, yep. Pan, yep, funnel, warm water, yeast. Hydrogen peroxide? Where do we get that from? And that's the bit that sounds a bit dangerous. Um, I don't know where to get hydrogen peroxide, so, but I have heard you can get it from the local pharmacy. So let's pop there and see what we can find. Right, none at the pharmacy, no hydrogen peroxide back at the pharmacy. So I'm just going to go on the internet again, search for hydrogen peroxide, 6%. Okay, I can just order this online, so that's really easy. Order, bing, and we'll just wait for that to arrive. Okay, so big box has arrived from the internet. Let's have, have a look inside. So let's have a look. Okay, so we've got our hydrogen peroxide. It says on our twinkle seats you use 6% and this is 9%, so it will work. If you use less than six, it won't, but as you use higher quantities, it's gonna get a bit more dangerous, so do be really careful. With any science experiment, it's always really important to think about risks and how you can stop yourself coming from harm. And with this one, it's just equally as important. So the first thing to do is be aware of the risks. So if we have a look at the back, it says it can cause serious eye damage and keep out of reach of children, wear protective gloves, clothing, eye protection and face protection. Okay, so this can be dangerous. Even on the back, there is a symbol of someone's hand that looks like it's melting. So it's not something you want to pour on your hands or anywhere near your eyes. So it can be helpful. So you can use some of the risk assessments to think about how might this harm someone and what can I do to control the risks? So to minimize those risks. So for example, when I'm doing this, let's think straight away, I can roll down my sleeves and I can put some rubber gloves on as well as some goggles for some eye protection when you're doing this to make sure you're safe. Right, now we've got our hydrogen peroxide, let's get the other bits we need ready to do the experiment. Okay, so the main ingredients for this reaction are the hydrogen peroxide, which as I said, we've just bought online, some dish soap, washing up liquid that's not antibacterial, some yeast and some food colouring. I'm aware about the risks of using hydrogen peroxide. It's harmful, especially to my skin and to my eyes, and you definitely don't want to go anywhere near drinking it or, or having the chance of putting some on your hands and accidentally tasting it. So making sure we're not doing that. But now we want to try and further those risks so we're aware of them, but how can we stop harm? So what I'm gonna do is to try and help myself further is I'm gonna wear rubber gloves throughout the experiment and some safety goggles. If you don't have safety goggles, you can always try just swimming goggles, some form of eye protection. But swimming goggles are better than sunglasses, say, because swimming goggles actually have the bit around the edge, so they're protecting your eyes from any splashes. So if it splashes, it can still go in your eyes. So sunglasses like might look cool, but actually they're not that good for science. The other thing I'm doing in this experiment to try and again think about risk is spills because often new things can get knocked over. You might have a cat, it might come along and knock something over. So I'm going to stand up for my experiment to make sure if anything does accidentally spill, I can jump out of the way. Right, so the first thing you want to do in this experiment is put in two 
tablespoons of water and then add one teaspoon of yeast and then give that a good stir. So the yeast is the catalyst in the reaction. So a catalyst is a new big word and that means it helps the reaction speed up but it's not actually involved in the reaction. It just helps it go faster. So hydrogen peroxide naturally breaks down into water and oxygen. If we left our bottle of hydrogen peroxide out on the side in the sun for a long while, it would eventually break down and go through that process. But the yeast helps speed up the reaction so it happens faster. All right, that's all dissolved. Okay, so we're just gonna put that to one side. Once you've got your yeast ready, we're then ready to use our hydrogen peroxide. And we've thought about risk and we've thought about our clothing, so we're ready. But before we add our hydrogen peroxide, we're just gonna take five more. So take five for safety, think for five seconds, is there anything else I need to do to be safe? So I've got my goggles on, I've got my gloves, I've got my funnel. I have marked how much hydrogen peroxide I need on the side of my bottle so I can pour it straight in and the cat is nowhere to jump at me, so that's fine. So we're going to put our funnel in, check for safety, we're okay, and we're gonna add our hydrogen peroxide into our bottle. So this is the bit that we don't want to spill it anywhere or get on our hands or in our eyes. Okay. Right, and I've filled it up to the mark. So what I did earlier was I poured in 125 millilitres of water, which is about half a cup, and drew a line on the side of our bottle. And then I tipped that out so I knew where the 125 mark was. I'm gonna add some nice green food colouring to it. This is a substance you don't want to get in your eyes, the dish liquid either, because it actually has warning labels. So it's being aware of those risks and trying to stop yourself from harm. So we're just gonna add a few squirts of this. And this is what's gonna help our mixture bubble up because if you add washing up liquid, that's what helps hold the bubbles in place. If oxygen is made from the hydrogen peroxide, it would just bubble off. But because we've got the dish liquid in, that will form a foamy bubble solution. Now we've put in our bottle our hydrogen peroxide food coloring and dish soap. I'm going to put it in a high sided container. So I'm using this plastic box, but you might have a big pan or your sink somewhere safe to do the experiment in. So as it foams up, you know you're not going to lose any of the foam anywhere and make a mess. Right, we can take our funnel out. Now this, because it's got hydrogen peroxide in, needs to have a good wash before you put your yeast mixture in, because otherwise the reaction is going to start in the funnel and not in the bottle. Okay, I think we're ready. So we've got everything safely in there. I've got my yeast that I'm going to add. And just think, again, before you do something, think carefully about it. Have you done everything safely? Have we put too much hydrogen peroxide in there? We've followed all of our instructions. We've got the right amount of yeast. So we're ready to go with our experiment. Shall we see what happens? This is very exciting. Shall we make some elephant's toothpaste? Ready with the yeast. In it goes. I'm going to pour it in nice and quickly. Oh my goodness, it's already warm! <laughs> It's, it's inflating a lot. <laughs> wow, oh my goodness, it still grows. It's growing really big now. This is so fun. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is so good. That is such a huge mass of foam. Now, what is magical about this experiment is although the hydrogen peroxide we've talked about is very, very dangerous, when it breaks down, thanks to the yeast speeding up the reaction as a catalyst, it breaks down into water and oxygen. Hydrogen peroxide is made from hydrogen and oxygen atoms. So when it breaks down, it forms water, which is also made from hydrogen and oxygen atoms, and oxygen. So this is just foamy water. So it's really fun to play with. So you can play with it and get messy. If you're worried at all about your skin, then do wear gloves like I am. I don't really want to put my hands in there, but you can play with this because it is now safe because all the hydrogen peroxide has reacted away with all the yeast and you can see it's still going. <laughs> this is so fun. If you haven't done this before, I hope you get a chance to try it at home because it's actually really straightforward and really easy to do.
This experiment is called elephant's toothpaste, but it's not actual toothpaste, so do not put at any stage any of these things in your mouth. It is not suitable and it will make you very, very poorly. So definitely don't do that. And be careful in your cleanup operation because if there's any hydrogen peroxide left inside this bottle, that will harm you. So again, just be really careful cleaning up all this fun mess you have made. Very good. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's STEM Club. We hope you have just as much fun trying out some elephant's toothpaste as we did, and we look forward to seeing you next time for more STEM fun. It works! Ah!